welcome to our fourth topic. And the basically our focus on the fourth topic is looking at the factors that uh, can lead to health market failure. Um, we've been exploring the law of demand and supply, or rather issues related to demand and supply. And we're able to check out on several aspects. And uh, we have that whenever the demand of a good is high, the supply will also go high. When the demand is low, the supply will also go low. And we try to look at several issues in line with that. Now, they want to look at issues with market failure. So as an introduction, we find that development is a concern of the, all developing countries and the health plan among the ATC is equally charged with that concern and must be knowledgeable about what development implies and the role health should play in the development of a given country. The following questions are of a paramount importance for health in a developing country such as Kenya. So what is development? How does it differ from economic growth and how can development be measured what role does health play in development? What role should the health work play in facilitating development? And this subsection, therefore, will help in attempting to provide some answers and insights to these questions. So, the objective is to be clear that by the end of it, you should be able to describe factors that can do with health market failure, also explain the perspectives of health, discuss the different characteristics of market, and also explain the concept of health and economic development. So that would mean that for us as health practitioners um, and with management, of course, we agree that you may find yourself working in a managerial position within a hospital setup or within a health facility or even within a, a large pharmaceutical industry. So you need to understand these aspects that will deal with the market failure of health products. So to begin with, we'll do some exploration of some things like we have adverse selections and this is a situation resulting from asymmetric information in which individuals are able to purchase insurance at the rates that have low actuarially actually fair rates plus leading cost and an event in health care whereby one party decides not to reveal the full extent of their risk profile of the other party that is insurance model. Then we do have moral hazard and this is um, the possibility of a consumer or consumers or providers exploiting a benefit due to the disadvantage of a consumer, providers, or financing community as a whole. Remember, like recently when we had COVID, the outbreak of COVID, and then everyone was being encouraged to ensure that you are doing your sanitizing, you know, you have the face masks and such like. So you remember, uh, the, the, the sanitizer was going for about 290 shillings, 200 rose to 1500. That is moral hazard because they're exploiting other people within the system. Then supply and use demand. There's an insurance term that represents the disincentives created by insurance for individuals to take measures that will reduce. Excuse me, that will reduce the amount of care demanded and in the health services literature, it is more commonly used to express the additional quantity of health care demanded resulting from a decrease in net price care attributable to, attributable to insurance arises, arises where the attitudes and behavior of personal or organization change once they are covered because of cost or losses in health care consumption may be high when insured. Then we have asymmetric information term and this is a situation in which the parties of the process of the transaction have differing amounts of relevant information. So you find that doctors have more knowledge and information about medicine patients or consumers and the individuals may not be the best judge of his or her own interest and the doctor acts as the agent of the patient's demands. What are the perspectives of health? We do have it as health being a right, you know, that is why I'm a patient hospital and the procedure. The doctor has to seek content from his people or her people, the patient's people, the client, 
or eventually have the client dying by after killing him or her so that you are in agreement. So health is a right, yes. But again, the, the patient is always right. So health is viewed by some right analog analogous to justice or political freedom. And the WHO constitution says that the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. So although it is difficult to believe that equal health status is attainable in the same way that equal political freedom may be health seen as the fundamental that constraints to its full attainment must be minimized. So in part, this involves ensuring access to health and the government is seen as having a responsibility to ensure this comparable with its role in ensuring equal justice. So according to such a view, you'll find the government will particularly concerned with issues of equity in health and healthcare. That's why right now with care, the government is striving to ensure that there is a universal healthcare whereby it began by allowing the under five to be treated freely without having to incur any cost, especially with the public uh, facilities. Then health has a consumption good. Of course, again, the TB drugs HIV regimen are given for free in public facilities. That is trying to help have health as a consumption good. So health is seen as an important individual uh, that is not comparable with justice, but rather with material aspects of life, such as a view of open refers to health. So the government here has no special responsibility in the promotion of health, but leaves decisions as to its comparative importance to individual consumers. So the role of state under such a view might be limited, ensuring that the healthcare provided is of an adequate amount. So health can be seen as good because now people have to buy it. We do have different characteristics of markets. One shows that markets, one aspect that we focus on as characteristic of market is the market failure. And uh, what is the market like? So, okay. So, the definition of a market was saying that for many people, the world market conjures up a picture of a town square or with lots of small uh, stallholders, you know, selling everything from fruits, vegetables to meat and fish. But for economists, the term has a much wider meaning. It's uh, used to describe any process of exchange between buyers and sellers. It will also mean a free market whereby is exchange which occurs without interference with the, from the government. Again, formally, a market can be defined as a, an asset of arrangements that allows buyers and sellers to communicate and thus arrange exchange of goods, services, and resources, and also information is a vital ingredient for any market. So both buyers and sellers need to have access to sufficient information to allow them to make rational decisions. Okay, so we do have problems of risk and of uncertainty as an aspect of market, the market. So if you're going to be healthcare in a free market, then we have to have enough money to pay for it. Nevertheless, you'll find that uh, the healthcare is expensive and we cannot predict when you're going to, to be ill. So what happens, uh, what makes us that postponing buying healthcare is often risky. So we face the problems of risk and uncertainty and the market response to this problem is to develop an insurance market to remove the uncertainty and also risk from health spending. We pay an agreed amount of money per year, whether we need health care or not. Then when we need care, the insurer pays the bills. However, the large, uh, large they are. So, a free market is health in healthcare requires an effective health um, care insurance market. Unfortunately, the health, the healthcare insurance market itself is often not 
uh, efficient. Moral hazard and adverse selection both cause significant ticket fail. Then you have an equal information whereby there's that sort of moral hazard we already talked and adverse selection that help to explain why free market in health insurance is unlikely to be efficient. We find that healthcare markets face even more fundamental information problems. So we are now going to examine maybe some of the problems that may be caused by unequal information and the consequent role of uh, the role of doctors as agents for patients. Mm. Okay, before we explore that, maybe we look at the consumers so that is actually maximize. We'll find that people who consume products yeah, are the ones who are like the ones who maximally make use of what is available. So are consumers rational satisfaction maximized? We find that the market theory assumes that consumers know what is best for themselves. That is, they can make choices which will maximize their total satisfaction. So with this, you find that if this assumption is wrong, then markets will automatically produce efficient results. The economists call the satisfaction that consumers get from consuming a good or service utility. So the extra satisfaction from consuming a bit more is called marginal utility, while the total satisfaction gained from consuming the whole amount is referred to as the total utility. The satisfaction gained simply depends on the quantity and mix of goods and services chosen. The theory assumes that uh, consumers get more satisfaction from more goods and services, but that they increase the satisfaction from consuming another unit, that is the marginal unit utility diminishes as consumption rises. We do also have an aspect of market competition, whereby the free market models predict large number of numbers of buyers and sellers, and all of whom have no power individually to influence the market price. However, a significant proportion of health care is delivered by hospitals, and these hospitals can often exercise monopoly power within the healthcare market in the local area. The sixth aspect is the externalities, whereby the economist defines external effects as involving positive and negative results for others that are consequences of one's own actions. So externalities or spillover effects provide another source of market value. Again, the problem is related to information, and this time, market price does not accurately contain all the information about the benefits and costs of the market transaction. So earlier, we outlined how this might occur when a consumer um, maybe bought an item that eventually wasn't functional or didn't function to their satisfaction. So now we are interested in how this might operate in a healthcare market. The seventh aspect in market failure information is equity and health. And equity is more than efficiency. So efficiency is not everything. We are also concerned with what is fair. So if we had a market distribution of healthcare, then only those who could afford to pay would be able to purchase it. So most people regard that as unacceptable. And this is a major reason why most societies regard health as are different from other commodities. So as Donaldson and Gerard put it, within most societies there exists in some uh, some form of another concern that healthcare resources and uh, forces behind the creation of the general health service in the development. So with that, you find that we just need to ensure that there's a field in terms of healthcare provision because we've seen that healthcare is actually a good debate. So if you're buying insurance from insurance companies so that uh, we are able to, to, to cover our families, individuals, our parents, then we are doing the right thing because as we said, you never know when illness will come. We do have health and economic development and we just have an overview of this. We find that development is the pattern of all developing countries. And as I already introduced that, you'll find that the health planner manager and others equally charged with the concern must be knowledgeable about what development 
science implies and the role health plays or should play in the development of a given country. Take a situation whereby people are sick in the nation. Like right now when you're having the COVID crisis, how is our economy? How is our economic development? Do you realize that within 100 days, there was an analysis that was done in the fact that because a country, Kenya, we've lost about 100 billion in revenue because of the COVID, because now people are not able to go to work, people are not uh, able to go out there, buy products, and use them, you know, as used to because they are, those who are on pay cut, others are on job loss, you know. So, assuming a nation is sick, you'll find that even its economy will go on its knees. So, the meaning of economic development, therefore, would mean that it has been uh, variously defined. Like uh, the modern view of development perceives it as both physical reality and a state of mind in which society has through some combination of social, economic, and institutional processes secured the means for obtaining a better life. So we do have development in all societies, however, that must consist of at least the following three objectives. That is to increase the availability, distribution, and accessibility of life sustaining goods such as food, shelter, health, security and protection to all members of the society. And then we also have it that needs to raise standards of living. Huh? As a, the second objective is to raise the standards of living, including higher incomes, the provision of more jobs, better education and better health, and also more attention to cultural and humanistic values so as to enhance not only material well-being, but also to generate greater individual, community and national esteem. We do have another objective whereby it is to expand the range of economic social opportunities and services to individuals and communities by freeing them from servitude and dependence on their people and communities and from ignorance and human misery. So what are the main differences between growth and development? So I can say that development encompasses the total well-being of of the individual, a community or a nation, while economic growth is concerned with the increase in per capita earnings of the people making up the nation. Another difference is that the economic growth is one characteristic, so characteristic of development. Yet development must be measured by the rate of economic growth. So it's possible for a country to experience economic growth without becoming developed. So a country, for example, may acquire a great wealth from its mineral deposits, but have a low level of health services and this is due to the fact that the wealth goes into the hands of a very small minority who might squander it on luxury goods instead of establishing a viable infrastructure. Then the last difference is that development is concerned with the total person, his economic, social, political, physiological, psychic and environmental requirements. If one of these is not fully catered for, then development has not been achieved. Okay, so what are the characteristics of economic development? One of the characteristics is that it is rising share of industry along with failing share of agriculture in GNP and increasing percentage of people who GNP is gross national product and increasing percentage of people living in the cities rather than the countryside, then also passing through periods of accelerating, then decelerating population growth during which the age structure the country changes dramatically. And we also have changes in consumption patterns as people no longer spend all the income on necessities but instead move on to consume durables and eventually to leisure time products and also services, then also meeting the needs of the present without compromising the, compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, that is sustainability and lastly. The last characteristic of economic development is participation, uh, mainly by the citizens of the country in the process as well as the benefit, while economic development and modern economic growth involve much more than a rise in per capita income, there can be no development without economic growth. So that is what we had to cover today in our fourth topic, and basically having an overview of uh, economic development in terms of health and an overview of market failure and what we'll do to that. So we've done some definitions of terms. We looked at some of the causes of market failure, so to wait for market failure with the economic development, and also other to be able to look at uh, the meaning and also some of the characteristics of economic development and objectives.
objectives of the economic development. So I do hope that in case of an inquiry, listening to this audio, having time that uh, in which we should not check the URL. Um, in case you have any queries and any concerns, feel free to inquire and I shall be able to respond to you accordingly. We shall be able to discuss further on this. So have a nice day.